This is amazing. Now we can use local AI video generators like Cog Video X. As you can see right here, we get 5 second videos and we can extend them to even 30 second videos like this. I've been doing different animations on this specific timeline on each 5 seconds or 48 frames to animate different scenes within just one image. Using one image like that, I'm able to do similar features to extend videos like what you can do in other paid subscription AI video generators. So let's check out how we can do that in Comfy UI. Previously, as we talked about, Dimension X combined with Cog Video X5B to do different angle orbits. This time we're going to do video extensions using Cog Video X. It's very user friendly, I would say, and lots of GPUs can run Cog Video X nowadays. We can try that out with the video extension, and we can also combine the orbit angles as well. Dimension X LoRa works with the extended videos as well, so let's check it out. This is the workflow that I did. First of all, we have the load image now because this is AI video generation based on image to video. We're going to use the Cog Video 5B image to video model. Before that, we can choose the image that we want to load into the workflow and generate videos with. I have options here to ask if you load the image from path. If that's yes, then it will bring up the load image from path. The image from here passes to the model files and the VAE encode to start processing AI video generations. If you choose not to use that, then of course you're going to use the load image by default in the Comfy UI load image node and pass that to resize image. Again, for Cog Video X, it doesn't really matter if you have a high resolution image because it will be resized, trimmed down to 480p resolution. After that, it will bring it to the image encode and just do a typical sampling for the VAE encode and VAE decode, generating an image or videos within the 49 image frames, which is about 5 seconds for the 8 FPS settings right here. This is something that most people have feedback about that it's not enough for the image to video where you're able to do just 49 frames in that duration. Using a very low FPS, you're hardly able to animate the character or any objects that are moving or enriching the videos. So what I did is get another group here, starting with the last frames of the previous generated videos, which means I'm going to bring this first group's video's last frame image and uh, pass that to the second group here for image to video. This is actually a very basic concept. This is all image to video groups. But then I've created the image count in here, passing the last image frames, which is this one. And then the second group of image to video will be based on this image frame and start animating another 48 image frames, which is about five seconds of video again. The flexibility here is that you can do another text prompt within that five seconds. For example, I have here, the skull on the elf's hands is burning with purple fire. In the first group here, the elves are looking left and right. The eyes are peeking left and right, something like that. Although it doesn't really follow the prompt exactly, it does show the elf holding the skull. And then, the skull is looking left and right. This is another funny aspect of these animated videos. The next extension of videos adding another 5 seconds starts here, as you can see in the result. It does follow my prompts very smoothly, going with the purple fire burning the skull, then those magic energy effects start appearing on the screen. Of course, we'll take another last image frame from this extended 5 second video, bringing it to the third one. This is a basic concept that you can continue as long as you want to extend the videos. It keeps bringing the last image frames and then starts processing that for another 5 seconds of image to video. We can do other motion actions here where we're using another text prompt. For example, in this next five seconds, I'll do evil smile showing the teeth of the elf. Let's check out the result here. It actually does show a smile but doesn't do the vampire teeth. That's okay because this is an elf and so far I've created videos that are about 15 to 18 seconds long. That's good enough for the extended videos for this image. You can extend five times more in this workflow because I have set the fourth extends and then the fifth extends groups in here. All of them are lined up on each image frames preset already. It will just keep stacking up all the AI videos and then it will pass the last image frames to the next group for another image to video generation. This is actually a very simple process. 
That's how the video extend is running at the back end. As you can see, even in Kling AI and Runway, there are a lot of video extend features where they're using a similar concept to this. So I'm bringing this one into Comfy UI, and then it can be doable using the Cog Video X image to video. And of course, for the Cog Video X text to image, which is the Cog Video X 5B, this is by default the text to video. This one is able to allow you to choose higher frame numbers in the sampler as well. The only restriction for 49 frames is using the Cog Video X 5B image to video model. I have tried higher numbers here, like maybe 50 or 60, 70, something like that, but it keeps prompting me that the maximum number is 48 image frames. So there's about five seconds of AI video generated here. That's why I have created this workflow to overcome these limitations in the Cog Video X 5B image to video model. Once you generate all five video extend groups, it will use another custom node here called the join videos. The join videos, I've seen a lot of people using it to combine random videos together. In the GitHub project page of the join videos, which is the Comfy UI custom nodes called the Comfy UI animation nodes and workflows, this custom node package or GitHub project page shows you the join videos. It's a very basic concept actually. It's joining all the videos, combining results, passing all the image frames. So passing all the image frames into this join videos custom node and it will combine all the videos together stitching them into one long length video as the result. But I see a lot of people trying to use different scenes for videos 1 to 5 because maximum join videos are up to 5 videos. They're putting random videos like that. I feel it doesn't have some meaningful stuff within these kinds of combinations joining different videos together. So I see these examples have a good concept using join videos, but I like to use these features as the AI videos extended features. So when we join five videos, or like in these examples where I join three videos from the image to video generation result, I've combined those three into the join videos. And lastly, it will generate the full length of the combined result here. Let's take a look at this one. So the first five seconds here, the skull is peeking left and right and then starts burning with purple magic fire, and the last five seconds dissolves the skull and shows the elf's smile. So that is the whole motion of that. Let's check out the whole video length. This is 18 seconds. So yes, very close to what I expect to be for 48 or 49 image frames per each sampling generation, and combined together it is 18 seconds. And for Cog Video X by default, it is eight frames per second. So the frame rate is pretty low. That's why the motions are very slow in here. What we can overcome in this situation is using frame interpolation. For lower VRAM hardware, you can use the Rife VFI. And for higher VRAM GPU machines, you can use the FAME VFI nodes here where you can have better overall performance. So I multiply this by four so it will become 24 FPS in the final generated result here. This actually isn't a very complex thing to do when you're using the image to video on each group here. As you can see, each group is very simple image to video. But then I do a little trick at the front to load the last image frames from each previous AI video generation. Using that last frame, we keep extending the video length and join it back together, stitch it back together as the whole video like this one. So that's the complete motion that can be shown within that 18 seconds in the final result. And that looks pretty nice for this one. Yeah, let's try out another example together in this video. Again, I've used the AI videos multi-tool workflow that I did previously. You can check that out in the video links description below. This is creating the image scenes, not generating the videos. What I did is I used that previous 3D render style image, put that into these forms, two groups for the image to text generations. I found that I don't need to use the 3D rendering keyword. So I crossed that out using only what I need for my text prompt. Then I disabled that group and started doing the text prompt in the flux text prompt group conditioning groups here. So doing the same text prompt for that elf holding a skull and then tweaking something for the realism styles. And that's how I have this image using text to image, very simple method and keeping things very basic. Simple is better than having complex stuff going around hundreds of nodes to create one image.
because when we're doing AI videos, we're mostly spending so much time creating scenes by scenes, image by image, so we don't have too much time to consume on only one image. That's why I'm going to set the most stable settings in the sampler that can handle most of the image generations. And then once I got the first sampler result, I pass it to the refiner for the flux. So this is another case, a sampler to render, getting more details for the image result. After I got this, I save it. I like this one more, so I save this image result for the coming up examples that we'll do in the video extend. For COG Video X, personally, I don't think we need to upscale the image that much or use the SDXL refiner to refine the image. That's just unnecessary because when you use the image upscaler in these groups here to make it a 4K resolution. But then when you bring it to COG Video X, you have to downsize or resize that image back to 1080p resolution. So it really doesn't matter to upscale or not for COG Video X. But of course, if you're running your AI image in Minimax or Clean AI or Runway, then you have to use high resolution images for the video scenes. In here, I'm having the resolutions of the 16 by 9 ratio landscape view ratio here. So I think this one is good enough for COG Video X, even using this resolution size to trim it down back to 1080p. That's still able to handle the quality of the video generation result. So what I'll do is bring the refined image of this one and put that into the COG Video X video extended workflow that I just did here. So what I have is saved in the image path. This is my behavior. I don't know what other people like to use. I more likely use the load image from path because when you save an image, you're saving in your folder path. Then I just type my folder path and the file's name here and it's ready to go. Rather than using the load image, this node here is going to duplicate the image files in your local machines. So there's no point in always duplicating the image files like that. Rather than using the load image, I like to use load image from path so we can get started to play around with the new image here. Since the image structure is the same as the one I did for the 3D render elf holding a skull. So I'm going to use that one and let's generate one time and see how that goes. And yes, make sure you have the correct file path and fix that and it will be ready to go. As you can see, just load the new image here and we can wait for the result of this. I'm using the same text prompts for the AI videos, so I don't change too much in this generation of AI videos. It will be using three groups here. What it does is extend the videos two times, and that will be 18 seconds again, and we will see the result afterwards. Okay, so coming to here, I got the first video result, and here are some tips on how to use or a better, more efficient way to use the video extend features. You don't need to turn on all the image to video groups here, Instead, I will just turn on the first group for the original image to video group and start to generate the first result here first. And remember, set your seed number to fixed. And once you like that result, you can start continuing the other rest of video extend groups to extend your video length and so on. But then, as you can see, this result is morphing the skull and I don't like the hand as well, the fingers are stuck into the skull and look kind of bad. So what I try to do is change other seed numbers and generate one more time again to see if there's a better result. And if you have a better result there, then you can continue on the other stage video extend, or I should say start using the second extent first, step by step. If you know your second extent isn't good, then of course you don't have to run the rest of the video extend and you keep changing the seed numbers and retrying the second extent as well. So let's wait for the result and we'll see full length later. I will be extending three times, no, two times. So that will be on the clock. Third extend groups will stop in this one. And here's the result of the generated video extend length for the generate result. And actually, yes, I have to mention that with COG Video X, I find that this model isn't doing good for ultra realistic or photorealism styles of videos. We can't compare that with Minimax, Clean AI, or those other paid AI video generators, because this one obviously has fewer parameters, size of AI models, and running locally with only one 4090 NVIDIA GPU that can't compare with H100 GPU or other strong server side rack running multiple GPUs to generate ultra-realistic AI videos. 
So for COG Video X, I suggest avoiding generating ultra-realistic or photorealism styles of AI videos because it will be like this. The skull on the hand will be morphing and the magic suddenly appears on the left hand and flying magic dust coming out from nowhere. And that doesn't look really good for ultra-realistic styles of image because I have tried several 3D render style images and they are doing pretty well. So yes, I think with COG Video X, if you want to use that for image to videos and also use that for video extend, like for example, this one at uh, 24 seconds, I like it, it's pretty cool. And like this one, it's the 3D render style image that I bring to the photorealistic styles of the same image element. And the structure of that is coming from this 3D render style image. And for this cartoonish or 3D style image, COG Video X did actually pretty good for the animations and also for the video extend like this. And yeah, I would say if you use COG Video X, try to just stay away from ultra realistic or photorealism styles that won't do good for such a small parameter size model, I would say. And we can try out, for example, this image. So we're going to close this for making it clearer, clarifying that we're using this image like a robot sitting on this flying rocket-like spaceship in the sky. So imagine that we'll animate this, and then in here we turn that off for using the load image path. We're loading from the image upload, and next step is going to do some prompts, and we'll see the 3D rendering performing better in COG Video X video generation. Okay, so we have the generated result. I just did one video extend for this short demo here. Just want to show that COG Video X is able to do 3D render styles of animations. It's able to do pretty well without any morphing of the objects or deformations in the videos and the extended one which I have prompted the rocket to turn left. And it does do what I want to do in here. So very simple text prompt for another 5 seconds which is the rocket turning left. And then here's the full scene combining the first 5 seconds and then another extended video length which looks pretty cool like this with slow motion turning left of the rocket, and there you go. We have the extended videos feature locally running, allowing us to use image to videos like this one. So yeah, so far I've tested COG Video X. It's not that bad for AI videos, but you have to use it in the right way. So for example, like this kind of 3D style image to videos, it's able to do it pretty well, but of course, it's not going to be high quality videos like what you see in other paid services. But at least for local AI videos, it does the job and it works. So I hope you guys got inspired on how to use COG Video X. Maybe you can use it for hyper realistic style someday, or if you can do it right now, then that's good for you. But if I just push it to hyper realistic styles for the image to videos in COG Video X, it just doesn't meet my standard of the hyper-realistic style. So I'm not going to or will avoid using those kinds of images for COG Video X. So that's it for this video, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a nice day, see ya!